spirit of connecting people and parks for life, for the last 35 years, Miami-Dade County Parks, in partnership with the Miami-Dade Commission for Women and the Parks Foundation of Miami-Dade, has been honoring women for their achievements and contributions to Miami-Dade County. They are successful leaders in various industries, including sports and athletics. Well, I started at the Heat as an intern while getting my master's degree. And I really credit my career and, and becoming a Heat lifer with the organization's interest and excitement towards innovation. Be the one to raise your hand and say, I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to build out that area of our business. I can see an area for improvement because when you take that sort of active role in your own career advancement, in your own career development, your leaders will thank you for it. They are leaders at the forefront of creating solutions for our community and women's issues. I think my greatest achievements are talking about autism and neurodiversity at a time when people didn't talk about it. I think we've normalized it. We've come so far in the last 10 years and I'm so happy to be part of that. And then septic to sewer, I'm obsessed with infrastructure. I've been talking about this for decades and now it is a priority of the County Commission. When we talk about water quality and resiliency and really building a thriving community, you cannot have that conversation without water. We have to invest in infrastructure. Really grateful to the mayor for giving me this once in a lifetime opportunity. A CEDAW is a United Nations policy. It's, it stands for the Convention to End All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And it's been adopted by most countries in the world, but unfortunately not by the United States. Our team in District 8 were able to get together a group of community stakeholders and work on the legislation and the communication strategy to get it passed. My obsession is bringing together leaders from across all lines of difference to who care about the same issue and to help them solve that issue together in ways they couldn't by themselves. For women who I, I think you know see the world from a lens of solutions and compassion and collaboration, we need that kind of leadership right now. This is the most divisive time any of us have ever lived through and what we need in this moment is leaders who can bring people together. They are advancing health care for women and children. What motivates me to work in health care is really my love of humanity. I know that at times that could sound a little cliche, but in order for people to be their best self, people need to be at their best health. And that means something very different for everybody. So health doesn't have the same definition and continuing to understand the differences in what health means to different people and then meeting them there just continues to motivate me to do the work because it's never the same work day after day. I kind of have this split personality. I have the career in fashion and I have the career in medicine. Medicine was something that was stable and beautiful and it was a great way to give back to the community. So it's something I pursued. So Lucy Tran has always been the love of my life. I learned how to sew clothing at the end of high school and then in college it just blossomed. I do design clothing for all women. It's important for me to make all women feel beautiful. They are storytellers and artists advocating for immigrants from diverse cultures. For most of my career has been about telling stories that empower our community, giving them information they otherwise wouldn't get in order to help them have a better life in this country. That's first. My role now is really about corporate social responsibility, but in addition to that, it's our community programs. I think all, far too often we put our head down and just work really hard and hope somebody notices. It's a really a two-part. It's both being able to deliver on goals, but it's also having that social capital and that network. Arts and culture experiences are critical in any community. That is the opportunity that the community gets to express themselves and see a reflection of themselves in the bigger picture. Arts and culture doesn't have political background. It doesn't have to do with socioeconomic. It doesn't have to do with your social status. It's really about seeing something beautiful or just seeing something and interpreting it. For the past uh, 42 years, I've worked closely with families in Miami-Dade County providing social work services, helping them meet their basic needs. My priorities include economic development, the housing crisis, reduction of the violence in our community, youth development and, and safety. All of us in the county, starting uh, with the mayor, uh, the board chair and county commissioners, we are all dedicated. We are all striving for a strong Miami-Dade County. They protect our oceans and ecosystems. How can I help 
undo some of the damage that people have done. Coral reefs are a great place to do that because they are really sensitive and have been damaged in many ways. And so being able to study them has been a great way to help take care of these precious resources. They tackle public health and are entrepreneurs. When it comes to women's health, there's a number of different determinants on multiple different levels. Being able to make decisions and have kind of autonomous decision-making in terms of one's health, whether that comes to reproductive health, whether that's cardiovascular health, a range of different factors. And that is not just, I'm going to make a decision to smoke or not, or I'm going to go for this health screening or not. It's also the interactions with healthcare providers. When I look at my volunteer role as a part of GRACE and the NAACP, I look at what contributions I can make to affordable housing, what I can do for sustainability and getting communities revitalized. We have to take really a much broader perspective as we look at what we bring to the table. They are leaders making history and who have left an imprint and legacy of themselves for the generations to come. It's a humble experience to be sitting in this chair and being appointed as the first female director of the Miami-Dade Police Department. I believe I've changed the perspective of other women who want to be in law enforcement, absolutely. I always wanted to give back and be a part of the community or be out there to help solve any issues or concerns that may present themselves. Georgia was a pioneer in basically learning about rainforests, about deforestation. She transformed our property into an amazing botanical garden, almost. And when I work in there now, she says to me, you're doing that wrong. You're cutting too much off. Stop it. So I'm listening. Jeanette had a positive attitude about life. In the 10 years she suffered from lymphoma, she never focused on that. She focused on life and she focused on what she was doing in the world. An example of this is that when she went through her second round of uh, lymphoma chemo, she said, Don, I'm in remission. And I thought, great, that's wonderful. Well, I said, what are we gonna to do to celebrate? And she said, I'm gonna run for commission. And I said, what? She said, I really wanna serve the community and I have a, maybe a limited time and so I'm gonna do this. And she jumped into a race with about six other people and uh, won. Her best times in City Hall were being in City Hall to receive people, talk about their problems, talk about their issues, and talk about how she could help resolve them. These women also share something in common. They have a unique relationship with our parks. So when I came to the Miami Foundation, it was at the very beginning of COVID. We had a survey that went out to our community asking what they needed in this moment. And the number one thing people wrote back was that they were craving parks and open spaces, that they needed places to unite and to feel healthy. West Matheson allows you to experience the Miami-Dade County that I grew up in. Camp Matacumbre allows you to see the Pine Rocklands as they existed 30, 40 years ago. At the same time, you can go to Crandon and see something completely different. There is a park for everyone. Whether you want to sail through Biscayne Bay, you want to camp out in the middle of the weekend, you want to see the wildlife at the zoo, they help preserve our environment, they keep us healthy through play and exercise. Parks are just, I think, jewels in our community. Whether they spend time with their families or bring children together. I have twins that are five and a half. <laughs> so without parks, it would be really hard. We take them every weekend. We'd take them every day if we could. Whether it's playing at a playground, having a picnic, or taking in the ocean and in the bay through beautiful Matheson Hammock. I'm so grateful for Miami-Dade County Parks for what it's brought to me and my family. Volunteering at my church, every single year, I had those children at a park. And we thought it's so important because it was gonna contribute to their physical activity, to their health, to their welfare. Or take the time to understand and study our park's ecosystems. Here in Miami, we really are in a precious, amazing place. For me, I feel so privileged to be able to be here and be able to contribute to the amazing science and the amazing education that is occurring in this great city. Georgia was so impressed with our parks here. I mean, she just loved the Fruit and Spice Park. She loved Matheson, she loved Crandon. She loved all the little neighborhood parks. They were just 
fabulous. Or enjoy their time alone in nature to reflect and heal. I like to find myself in the parks on my days off. You'll find me paddleboarding down here in Crandon Park or riding my bike through. I think it's just such a great way of releasing all your energy because I feel like life is so stressful and just being out in the parks is a great way to live. In the last few years, I've been on a self-care journey, learning to put my physical health, my mental health first before I could just take care of my family and take care of career. I think the parks are really a place for us to connect with nature and to connect with ourselves without the noise of technology. These women are all making our future brighter and better while living a park life.